Hi, this is Matthew Cratter from Trader University. And today I want to talk about Bitcoin and stocks and what I think is coming next. Now, there are two basic stages that I think we're going to pass through. As we've been seeing over the last last uh, few weeks, uh, there's been a sell-off in the S&P. Uh, we're well off highs. It's been sort of a violent sell-off. The VIX has been spiking. And this is all in the wake of the Treasury curve flattening and even inverting in parts. You can see here the uh, two tens, twos tens uh, spread basically going to zero, even going a little bit, a little bit negative. And uh, you can see that in the yield curve, we still have that uh, between the two year and the five year. There's an inversion. The two years at 1.5, five years at 1.42. So we've been having a sell off, and there's basically been a global risk off trade. Crude oil has been selling off, stocks have been selling off and crypto has been selling off. Now, why might this be in this first stage? Well, what happens when there's a sell-off and people have gotten too bullish and have taken too big of positions, maybe using some leverage and some margin, as we've been seeing, there's been a lot of investing on margin. What happens when there's a sell-off is there's a massive uh, risk off uh, risk off, off movement where people lighten up on their stocks, they lighten up on their crypto, they may get margin calls and their broker may force them to lighten up or they just choose not to invest this month, their, their monthly monthly paycheck, just thinking, well, things are heading lower, there's no reason to, to invest. And so what that means is you do get this sell-off in a bunch of different assets, treasuries rally, but everything, all the risky assets like stocks, crypto, corporate bonds, uh, commodities, everything else sells off. Now you can see here, this is a chart of Bitcoin and the US dollar. And you can see that uh, Bitcoin has been somewhat, somewhat prescient. Uh, so the, uh, the candlesticks are Bitcoin and this light blue line, uh, this light blue line here is, uh, is the S&P 500. Now you can see that a Bitcoin peaked back in uh, late June, early July, and then proceeded to sell off. And it's been sort of a leading indicator uh, for uh, the stock market, which itself peaked a little bit later. We had sort of this double peak in stocks, and then they sold off and followed the path. Now, if we pursue this logic, what, what, what the suggestion is, is that risky assets will continue to sell off. And so just because of forced liquidation, margin calls, etc., uh, we would probably expect, if, if the stock market continues to head lower, uh, and it certainly looks like that that way, at least in August and September, we would expect crypto and Bitcoin and other crypto to sell off in this sort of risk off trade. So I think that's stage one. Stage one is all these risky assets go down together. Now, stage two is a little bit interesting. Stage two is when the Fed has to massively cut rates even more than they have already to try, sort of prop up the system because there's going to be some real distress uh, that we've had a 10 year bull market in, uh, in stocks and housing and lots of lots of different asset classes. And so when things start to crumble, there's going to be so, there's going to be a lot of pain. And the Fed's only going to be able to cut rates so far. They can take the Fed funds down to zero. But then at that point, what they're going to need to do is start printing money, as they did. The technical name is quantitative easing. But basically what the Fed does is it prints more and more money. And in the course of printing money, I wanted to show you this one. We're not printing money. We're creating reserves in the banking system. When the, when the Fed prints money, they basically devalue the U.S. dollar against real assets and against other currencies. And we've even seen some competitive devaluations beginning, China devaluing their currency. So what happens when you have a devaluation? Well, when you have a currency devaluation, you get a, a very strong rally in real assets and especially in scarce assets. So we've been seeing this move up in gold over the last, uh, the last couple months. And so I think that the final stage is a really high price for Bitcoin. So the two stages are risk, risky assets sell off, including Bitcoin. And then there reaches a point where the Fed and other central banks have to devalue the currency and print so much money. That's when we begin to see Bitcoin hit uh, all-time new highs. It should surpass 20,000. Wouldn't be surprised if we get up to 40, 50,000 or more. Uh, by mid 2020. And it really all depends on how quickly the stock market sells off and how much distress there is in the system. But I think that's what's nice about Bitcoin. There's some built in support for it because of this, because there's basically no way we can avoid currency, a currency devaluation in the US over the next one, two, five, ten 10 years, but just too much debt and the economy needs, needs the stimulus. And so I think this is ultimately quite supportive for Bitcoin. So the basic path is down along with stocks, stabilizing at some point, and then really shooting to new highs. 
This is my current hypothesis. I'd be really interested in what you guys think about it. Drop me a comment in the notes below. And if you like videos about Bitcoin and where the stock market's heading, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks a lot for listening. I'll see you in the next video.